Good morning, friends. It is the 22nd of March, and this is our daily Lenten devotional. We're reading from the book of Matthew today, Matthew 9, 27 to 34. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus sternly ordered them, See that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Never has anything like this been done in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. Discussions about people having demons throughout the Bible have always sat in an odd place for me. The logical part of me, the very post-enlightenment um, part of me that is very scientific and just wonders in awe at what we can do in medical science today, I want to explain it. I want to use a modern explanation to say why that man was mute and why those men were blind, I want to be able to explain how Jesus was able to heal them with a touch or a word. I want to explain it. There's a big piece of me that wants that. And I'm willing to admit that in my past, that has actually been a struggle within my faith. It felt to me like this, the fact that we couldn't put a scientific definition or description on this means that it must be some sort of made up story. And if that's made up, then maybe the rest of this is made up. And I'm not saying that I don't hold that view anymore, but I hold that as being far too binary of a view. It's not an either or. Do I think that some parts of this are made up? Well, yes, of course. All history is made up by the people who wrote it. Every story that you have ever told has little teeny embellishments. Well, maybe I shouldn't accuse you, but I know me. Each time I tell a story, it gets better with each telling. But that doesn't minimize the truth to be found in it. In fact, to me, and as I continue to study the Bible, especially the Old Testament, the more I learn about the context of how the, new, the Old Testament came to be, how those ancient Hebrew people carried this forward and developed the stories and how they would change and redact and modify the stories to do a better job of speaking their truth in the moment, the better I sit with all of what I find in the Bible. Yet I don't need this to be literally true. Every single word, as if there was a camcorder and a microphone sitting right there 2,000 years ago to give us exact historical details. Because the reality is you've watched enough crime shows, even with a camcorder and a microphone, it doesn't ever tell the whole story. I am, in fact, much more comfortable the more I let this speak to my life in ways that aren't factual details or aren't only factual, if that makes sense. So what I want to do is I want to ask us today, I want to sit in the somewhat mystical idea of Jesus performing a miracle. And I want to take some of the surface value, the face value of what that story said. I want to talk about the second part, um, because there are more cases where Jesus heals blind people. And there are lots of scholars who have talked about how when, when we look at what Jesus was teaching is he was hoping that we as a society would remove the blinders from our own eyes and see what was really, really going on. I mean, he was asking that of the people in that day, but he's asking that of us today as well. But to heal a demoniac, a person with a demon from being mute, I want to sit with that for a minute because I love the imagery there. How often is it the evil in our world that works to stop voices from being heard, that works to oppress and minimize, make it so that you and I, who have a heart for helping people, don't hear 
the needs of those who are in need. How often does evil work in our lives? And evil can take any number of different shapes and forms, but how often does it work to suppress the voices of those who need to be heard? How often is it the evil of the structures of our politics and our culture and our society and even our big corporations that take people who are in desperate need of, whether it's healthcare, like somebody who is mute or blind, or maybe it's um, particular groups in the countries where we live, groups who are oppressed, whose voices aren't heard, where maybe our media is more likely to share the voices of people who look like me than somebody who looks less like me. I mean, I know you live in lots of different countries, so I'm talking specifically about my Canadian, Canadian context, but absolutely white, male, English-speaking, educated people, they get on the news. Their voices are the loudest. And if that means that black, female, lesbian um, I'd like, I'm just trying hard to list off, like, what about like, in Canada? We have a real struggle around indigenous voices not being heard, of being oppressed. We have all of these other people, other voices. When they're not being heard, is that not an evil amongst us? Like, sometimes it's intentional, and we can actually actively do things to route that out by just stopping listening, stopping paying attention to the voices or even the media outlets who refuse to share the voices that are being oppressed. But then sometimes it's the, the darker, insidious, baked-in cultural thing, like a person who's a member of the LGBT community who feels like if they say their truth, they will be shunned by their family. Sometimes that comes from religious reasons. Um, they will be um, ostracized from their jobs because they're not welcome to name their own truth there. These are baked in evils that are part of our society. I think that those ones are the more difficult to route out, but they are also the more insidious. Because if we look at something like an indigenous culture here in Canada, for generation after generation after generation, those people have been told that their voice is not welcome to be heard to the point where many of them don't even bother anymore. Why bother? The force of the colonizers is so strong. The wealth and the power is so strong. I can speak my truth, but nobody will ever hear it. And that becomes a cultural thing that weighs down heavily and eliminates the voices of the people who need to be heard. So I don't very often end these Sunday or these, sorry, I don't end these mornings like I do a Sunday sermon with a, a call to action, but today is one of those days. I think we need to take a very close look at each of our cultures where we are. I know, I love that every now and again, you guys will type in a comment about where you are coming from. And maybe today's the day. Let me know where you are watching from if you haven't done that before, because I love to know the cultures of where you are. But look at your culture. And look at a few things. First, are you the same as the dominant culture? What are the similarities between you and the dominant, dominant culture? And what are the differences? Just to kind of place yourself within your context. And if you are not the same as the dominant culture and you feel like your voice is one of the ones that can't be heard, then this scripture is speaking directly to you. Jesus is there for you to help you to stop being mute, to cast out the evil, not in you, but in the society where you exist so that you may be heard. And if you do look and feel and sound and speak and dress like the dominant culture, then it's up to you. And I'm pointing at myself as well. It's up to me to take intentional steps to make sure that my voice is a little quieter or so that other voices can be heard. Or my voice is in the background doing advocacy work to make sure that other people who sound and look and think like me see and hear who is being oppressed. We actually can utterly change the world by taking those steps in our cultures. And because we've gotten to know each other, I'm reaching out my arms to you and saying, please, can we do that? 
Can we make a little change in our own lives and our own little corners of the world? Because if you can picture a map of the entire globe where, where you're over here making a difference and I'm over here making a difference and she's over here making a difference and they're over there making a difference and that just spreads like grassroots around the whole globe until eventually they're the evil that mutes the voices that need to be heard is eliminated. That does, in fact, sound like a miracle, but it's a miracle that you and I, with God's help, we can achieve this. Let us pray. God, with great hope, we come to you, knowing that you speak in all voices, in all cultures. You, your diversity and your infinite nature means that you are present in and for every single human, every living thing. You speak. It's time for us to listen. Let your voice be heard through the people who often aren't heard. Let your miracles exist that eliminate the evils, that cast out the demons, that cause people to be mute. Cast out the demons in our cultures, in our societies, in our structures, in our politics, in our corporations. Cast out the evil that holds down people who just want to be heard. God, we come to you, willing, able to make those changes in your beautiful world. Guide us today to eliminate, to cast out demons. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me again this morning. As you can see, this is a topic that I am very, very passionate about, and I would love it if we could make a small difference in this way. It doesn't really take a big thing. You got to remember, there's what, like 8 billion of us on this planet? It only takes, like, if you'd make a little difference where you are and I make a little difference where I am, and the other 8 billion people make a little difference, well, that becomes a huge difference. That becomes something miraculous right away. Thank you so much for this, and I love that we can connect this way. If you haven't had a chance to yet, I invite you to put in the comments below where it is that you are joining us from. It's a real blessing to know that we are literally all the way around the globe and we are reaching out and we are connecting in beautiful ways. If you have missed any of the previous daily devotions, you can click over there. There's an entire playlist of them. And if you would like to subscribe, you can click up there. The other thing I can ask you is share this with a friend, somebody who you know needs their voice to be heard. Maybe don't share it with the people that you know are doing the oppressing. You should do that in person. But if somebody needs to hear a little bit of hope, this is the one. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining me yet again this morning. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye for now.